Hello there, my name is Ismas and welcome to another Blender tutorial and today we're going to be looking at how I modeled this, looking at how I modeled this uh, medieval building. Uh, so you can see how it looks and uh, it's a bit modular so you can uh, move uh, some of these assets around, uh, put them in different areas. So if I look at uh, this here, yeah, so the doors, uh, the roof and uh, if you wanted you could also just duplicate is you can also duplicate it into a different entirely building and uh, make a completely different uh, building uh, like uh, that uh, but uh, yes today we're going to be doing a time lapse video where we'll be also talking about what i'm doing throughout the time lapse and uh, yes so but before we get into that i want to also t i want to first talk about the materials uh, that i use uh, that will also be available free to download on my uh, blender website blender one on one dot com so if you go to the link in the description uh, that i'll be adding uh, you will be able to download uh, these five textures which are the all five materials or shaders that we used on this building you can see we have the concrete or rocky texture uh, that we use uh, for these rocky bricks and uh, we have uh, the wood and uh, this brick because you can see uh, these bricks here are uh, the corner bricks are a bit different use a different texture uh, from this here I uh, so also have this metal texture that I used uh, for these the door handles and uh, window handle uh, and what else I also use uh, this shingle here so you can you can go to that link uh, and uh, you will be able to download uh, these five shaders and uh, ex examine uh, the texture sorry the node setup that I used for each one of them. So I'm going to talk about these, how I set up these uh, uh, nodes or shader, shaders uh, in a bit, uh, but uh, I just wanted to get that out of the way that uh, you can really, you can download uh, the shaders yourselves and uh, examine them on your own. Uh, so, but uh, if you want to download uh, the project, the entire project, including the building and the, sh the materials here, uh, you will find that on my Patreon page. Uh, for that, it will be only exclusive to my Patreons. Uh, so, because they really do help me, uh, help me out and uh, support me uh, in uh, making these tutorials. Uh, but uh, these five uh, shaders are going to be available free to download for anyone uh, except uh, the project for the building here. Uh, that it will be only uh, that will be exclusive to patrons so let's dive in and uh, start with the shader i'm going to start with this uh with this uh, brick shader here explain it a bit explain it a bit and then i can uh, dive into uh, the other materials i'll see if we have time for that because uh, uh if you get uh, the hang of uh, how i did this here uh, the other materials are pretty easy to to create so let's dive into this so this material here uh, you can see it, it is also the material that creates this moss here or algae whatever you want to call it uh, this green stuff that grows around our buildings or uh, when it rains heavily or when it rains uh, for a long time uh, so yeah and that so the way this worked uh, you can see if we go to the node setup for this material you can see it starts off with a an ambient occlusion node that you can access under shift a uh, input ambient occlusion uh, this here and uh, so this the ambient occlusion node uh, does exactly what uh, it says it creates ambient occlusion uh, for the mater for the object uh, so and uh, what that means is that uh, it makes dark corners of the objects dark uh, so it makes corners look dark so let me first hide everything and just look at uh, the shell of the building. So if we preview just the ambient occlusion, you can see how the corners are a bit dark. Uh, that is called ambient occlusion and uh, you can produce that by using this ambient occlusion node. Uh, so you'll also notice that I'm, I'm using EV. Uh, this ambient occlusion also works in cycles as well. So if we go to cycles, uh, this you can see that uh, that ambient occlusion is also still there. So, but uh, if you're going to be using EV, uh, make sure you you check the amb the ambient occlusion node, the ambient occlusion setting here. Make sure you turn it on. Otherwise, 
uh, that node will not work. So make sure you have that turned on. And uh, by default, uh, the distance uh, the distance here, let me reset it, is 0.2. And you can see it's it creates a very thin line, uh, which doesn't produce uh, the results that I wanted. So I went in and uh, increased the distance a bit. So to something, I think it was 0.6. I think even yeah one can work as well so I increased uh, the amino occlusion there uh, to have a more pronounced amino occlusion so that is more spread out a bit uh, so that we have our algae growing out even further so then what I did it what I did to give it uh, that color you see uh, that here I used the color ram but before I before adding the color I fed the amino occlusion into um, a math node that you can access under shift a convert math node and then just change the operation from yeah the default is add and uh, that's what i use but uh, if it's anything else you can you can also try experimenting with the different operation you see here you can try power you can try subtract and everything else uh, but uh, i fed it into the add operation node math node uh, just to make it more pronounced or give it have a bit of control over uh, the contrast of the ambient occlusion because uh, even with this distance increase you can see the ambient occlusion is not uh, is still not powerful, so I use the uh, the add node to make it a little bit more pronounced. Uh, you can see it it gets a bit darker. Uh, you can also use the color ramp uh, to make to give it that more pron to give it more power like that, or make it a bit darker. Uh, let me show you here. Convert color ramp. You can fit this in here. You can see it's still faint, uh, but uh, if I bring this maybe closer, you can see we get the same effect. Uh, but uh, since I was using the color ramp for for the color, I decided to just use <coughs> the the math node here. I change the operation to add. As <coughs> it it does basically the same job, uh, without using the same nodes. I just wanted to switch around the nodes, uh, so that I have a uh, vari just variation. You can still use fit this and into the color up, and it will do the same thing, as you can see. Actually, it may not because you can see you, you would have to uh, figure out uh, w how the these nodes should be at uh, what distance they should be uh, but uh, this power this add node uh, works a bit different and uh, you just have to use this value you only dealing with one value uh, that you can slide around to get at uh, the desired effect instead of having to deal with these I don't know how many uh, nodes you want to have here. So uh, that's why I chose uh, to use the add node instead of the car ramp here. And uh, for the for the car ramp, I just use that as to provide uh, the color for the algae. And uh, you can see the way I set it up is that uh, uh, the black area, the, the, the most dark areas, I gave them this brownish color uh, just to have a mixture of dirt and uh, algae. And then uh, I also added this kind of fresh green around uh, that uh, brownish uh, dirt uh, just to have like uh, fresh algae growing a new algae growing uh, around that and then faded that into a brown algae that will fade into uh, the concrete or the walls of uh, the building so so what i did uh, that i got a texture image texture from cc i think it's called cc0textures.com it's a very nice website that you can download free textures uh, to use in your projects uh, so i used a texture from there and then i uh, added a overlay here just to control the color let me preview this node here uh, you can see i can control the color and uh, make it what i want that's what that's the reason for this node here uh, it doesn't do anything more than that uh, then fit that color into this here uh, into another blending mode that you can access under shift a color color mix rgb uh, this gives you access to all the blending modes in blender uh, so uh, because we have uh, this color ramp is producing a texture uh, that goes from green as uh, yellowish and then white i can just feed this directly into uh, the bottom color node uh, of the blend of the blend node uh, so that I can pre-multiply or multiply uh, the white uh, that will get rid of the white areas of this uh, texture and uh, so that where the white areas are uh, this color one here let me preview this so you can see 
I can easily change uh, the color, the white area. I don't know if I'm explaining this clearly uh, in a much clearer way. So basically what I'm doing, what the the multiply blending mode uh, does is the it removes all the white areas on the map and uh, replaces that with the color in the in the color one node and uh, that for right now it's just a white color and uh, you can change it to any color and that will replace will will, will replace uh, the white color in your uh, in your shader uh, but uh, because I have a texture that I wanted to use I just fed that into color one and that I uh, replaced the white areas but I still maintained uh, the algae as you can see uh, from there uh, then I think from that I uh, what did I do here? So yeah, so the the purpose of ambient occlusion is not to produce algae, but uh, it's also a great way to produce it because algae normally grows in dark areas, and uh, that's where ambient occlusion is simulated. Uh, so that's why I use it. I use ambient occlusion uh, for that uh, to produce the algae. But I still wanted uh, to have some ambient occlusion uh, to make uh, the corners a little bit dark. So that's why uh, after I got uh, the results that you see here, I pre-multiplied uh, the ambient occlusion, uh, that I, the uh, the ambient occlusion without changing the color, without changing its color uh, to this node to make these corners a bit darker. So you have the algae and then the ambient occlusion on top of that to make the corners a little bit darker. And then let me see what I what did I do here. So oh, so if you see in the final render or in the final image and go back to this you can see we have uh, those bleak pa brick patterns on top of that uh, but uh, they're not the on the original texture so the way I made that uh, the way I made that work is that uh, I use this image texture I don't remember I think I also use got this from uh, CC0 textures it's a very awesome website so and then Use the blending mode of overlay to overlay them on top of uh, the texture we had here, and you can see uh, the final results as this. And also another thing I did is that I got the brick textures and uh, fed that into the roughness here uh, to make uh, those to 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 make uh, the refresh uh, the bricks uh, kind of influence the reflective parts of uh, the entire wall. Uh, so you can see, let's, why is it too white? Let me see, it's too powerful. Yeah, you can see, so this is going to be our reflection map. And uh, so it should be able to influence uh, our reflection, the reflections of our walls. Uh, right now it's too reflective, so I can play around with this value to make it less reflective. Something like that, I think. Also, I think reduce this a bit. Uh, again, you can play, we can change the color of the entire wall by changing this color here. Let me unhide everything. You can see what we have. So, I also. I used the bricks as the bump map, so I didn't have a normal, I think uh, these bricks come with a normal map, but I didn't want to use that, so I just uh, fed that, fed the, uh, the the brick texture into a car ramp to get a black and white uh, map, and uh, also have some control over the contrast, and then fed that into a bump map to create a normal map uh, for our wall, and then, and then fed that into the normal map, and finally uh, I was able to get uh, the texture uh, that you see we have. So you can see how the algae is coming through. And uh, yeah, so, and uh, the, the great thing about this is that uh, none of these textures are baked in. So if I, you, you can see how this uh, log of wood is, uh, how, these, how the algae is also growing around this log of wood. If I move this log of wood, you can see the algae 
also goes away. So none of these, all this is dependent on ambient occlusion and uh, ambient occlusion is just simulated whenever there are two pieces uh, close to each other making dark corners. So if I move this around, you can see, let me move this to the two. You can see uh, the algae also moves uh, to that area. It follows or is updated to just to, to be in that area. So let's see, you can see on this window here, um, and by the way, this building is quite modular. So uh, this window here, if I move, I can remove it and you can see uh, the algae that was growing around it also disappears. So when I bring it back, you can see that is there. If I remove this log of wood, you can see that algae behind that also disappears. So if I bring this, you can see now we have some algae growing uh, around uh, there as well. And uh, yes, yeah, so I think in the next tutorial we can s in the next video we can start uh, the time lapse modeling and I'll be explaining over what I'm doing uh, in that. So thank you for watching.